Florida's governor is saying thanks, but no thanks to an invitation to join the host of The View. DeSantis turned down an offer to appear on the daytime talk show with his team tweeting out this scathing response that reads in part, thanks for the invite. I understand you are sending this request on behalf of your team, but are the host of The View really interested in hearing from Governor DeSantis about all of the important work he is doing on behalf of Floridians? Which of the below statements from the host of The View do you recommend our team consider when deciding if the interview will be a genuine pursuit of truth or worth the time? DeSantis' team goes on to lay out many of the personal attacks the liberal host launched against the governor. Here are just a few. You're just short of calling him a, a negligent homicidal sociopath because that's what he is. He's risking the lives of children, children's parents, their, their grandparents, anyone they may come in contact with, so that he could appeal to his white supremacist base. Jeff Santos. Jeff Santos. I think, I think he handled COVID miserably. I think he's a fascist and a bigot. It's anti-black. It's anti-gay. It's anti-LGBTQ+. It's anti-American. And it started with CRT. So if we start coming after black people, what comes next, right? Of course, the LGBTQ plus yeah. community, and then women, and then other marginalized right. groups. I mean, oh my Harris, goodness. what an invitation. And the email <laughs> said we would be honored <laughs> to have yeah. him. Yeah, well, I hadn't actually seen all of that. Look, um, as a journalist, as journalist Shannon, we go back and forth with people all the time. And you can have some, some spirited, fiery moments, whatever, always with respect, hopefully. But what that was, was something different. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, to, to call, to connect someone with, what they are without ever having talked with that individual just seems bizarre to me. It's, it seems thirsty for relevance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and I don't know who they think they are sitting from that perch. Sonny Hostin, by the way, when I was on the show with a book a couple of years ago um, about my dad who served, there were pictures, giant pictures of my biracial children behind. And she actually looked at me and asked, who do I represent? Who do I speak to? Black people or, and I mean, Whoopi looked at me and I was like, well, I speak to everybody. Yeah. I broadcast to everybody. And my family is ecumenical and biracial. So I, I, I get that they want that relevance, but wow, that is a far step to make to try to get it. it so is. I understand why he's not going. I, I do mm. too. And Joe, that email response from his press team was just brilliant. You know, back in my press shop, we had this theme, offense only is what I told my team. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a straight shooter as a reporter, we're gonna be, we are going to engage with you in that manner. Right. Steve Holland, Reuters, great example. But if you're someone, I, I could have spent my whole tenure being engaged with sensational palace intrigue New York Times pieces that were already pre-written, but we didn't do that, we went on offense. Yeah. This press team of Governor DeSantis Boy, do they know how to do that. They don't take the bait. <laughs> They're excellent. And that's why in a national campaign, I think they'll do quite well. They're not going to be overwhelmed by the press. No conservative or Republican should go on this show ever again. Because this is not the Barbara Walters show that was envisioned 25 years ago, right? Where you could have good conversation. And I'm all for strong opinion and, and provocative debate. But as you said, Harris, this is a whole bowl of wrong different, right? Because it's reckless personal attacks, not based in reality whatsoever. And, and then it's funny because they have the conservative on the show was Megan McCain fairly recently. It used to be on this show, actually. And Megan offered some good counterpoints, but then finally she had to leave probably for her own sanity. And now you see Ana Navarro on there, who's the conservative, who only voted for Joe Biden and Andrew Gillum, who ran against DeSantis. They could say all the things they want to about DeSantis being somebody who wants to murder children. He's going to win his re-election in Florida by a landslide. The people in Florida feel a lot differently than the elitists there on The View who live in their little bubble and have their seals in the audience clapping along to everything that they have. <laughs> well <Sorry>. said. <laughs> well said. And Emily, a lot of what they said about the governor of Florida, who's doing a great job, low unemployment, amazing economy, bothered me. But the one that bothered me most was Joy Behar. She said he has a white supremacist base. Why oh. attack half the country in this manner? Good, hardworking people who support the governor, who happens to be very popular and is going to sail to re-election. Well, why should we be surprised that they do? I mean, we've been seeing that for years now. Remember at a height in the 2016 campaign by those same media personalities that made fun of people's accents. They made fun of where people eat, right? If they eat at fast food, if they work hard, if they're blue collar jobs, they thrive. Their currency is mocking 
real ordinary Americans, real people like us here on the couch. That is their currency. That is what makes them feel better about themselves. Um, and I, I think what's interesting is after those, those ad hominem attacks, were there comments of, we have asked Governor DeSantis's office for a comment we, we haven't heard back? Did they follow up any of their really robust analysis well, they're not with journalists, so comments? They're not exactly. going to say something. Exactly. Like I think one of them is. I, I don't know how old that picture is. Well, I know they have and just some to new complete my now. statement, yeah, exactly. I think what's interesting too is the the response to the governor on social media. Not that we care about that, but saying calling him a crybaby and saying, "Oh, you can't take a little heat from the ladies of the View." This oh, is a governor. Oh. <laughs> this is a governor. <laughs> wow. And as his office said, he is busy serving the people of Florida. It's not about him being unable to take a challenge. It's about him not wasting his time. Mm -hmm. Yes. By the way, just to your point, are they journalists? ABC News has the view under its division. They moved the view from entertainment to the news division in 2014. Well, time to move it back. I think. Remember when it started, there were journalists on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Barbara Walters, obviously, helm. right? Yeah. yeah okay. So I, I don't know what they've migrated to now, but, but you spoke of Megan McCain, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and someone who I'm really proud to say hung in there for as long as she could. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She really did That's and tough. brought class to the set. And I just, mm -hmm. I, I send her all love and light and, and I hope she's in a happy place because she raised their game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know Absolutely. where their game is now, but they're punching down. <laughs> I have a feeling yeah. she's and, in a happy the, place right The governor of Florida, I mean, the, he, he took the high road in my view. He, although he did publish this email, I thought it was rather brilliant <laughs> his play. Team <laughs> did. His team did. Say, you guys know when we try to book Democrats, especially high profile Democrats on a lot of our shows, yeah. we, kind of, we get crickets chirping a lot of time. I can't yeah. even get a no out of some people. So credit to the team that even though, uh, you know, it was maybe a little snarky. Um, it was very creative, and they at least responded. So at least give them that. Also, the view knows if they book DeSantis and he comes on, that's probably going to be a very interesting, high-rated show for them because mm, people are going to want to see this clash, and and he doesn't want to give them that. Um, it, it's a show where we've all had friends who have served on the panels there, and they will tell you it is excruciating sure. to be there as a conservative. Um, I had one friend tell me that at one point when they would have pre-show discussions about topics, if she was really coming with the heat and had some good stuff for a conservative you know, viewpoint, that they would actually kill the topic from the show. Wow. So um, wow. That's, one person, that's one person's account of her time serving on the wow. panel there. Well, um, but listen, if you don't want to hear different viewpoints, maybe it's not called The View. And I look at, they you know, what you do on Sundays and in your program at, at, at late at night. Um, it is Fox at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at that. We had Senator, Senator Manchin on. We've had Ben Holland on my show. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at having those Democrat, those big Democrat voices, and you hope to hear at the end they say we'll come back because exactly. you want to treat it with respect. Absolutely. But that debate it's got to be real. Mm -hmm. Well, well played, Governor DeSantis and press team. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.